Hey folks, uh, my name is Loki Mayberg. I am a PM on the Teams platform team. Uh, I'm excited to talk to you today about building tabs with adaptive cards. Time permitting, I'll also be taking some questions at the end of the presentation. Before we jump into the feature, I want to just quickly go over some of the problems we're trying to solve. So some developers say building a tab or a Teams tab can be quite tricky. Oftentimes the tab doesn't look and feel native to the rest of Teams. Also, some web apps aren't responsive, and therefore they don't work easily on mobile. We also frequently hear about slow load times. Sometimes this is because of the fact that it's embedded in an iframe, but that could also open up a host of other constraints depending on how the web app is built. Finally, there are usually a host of other hidden maintenance costs. Uh, this is because some developers actually have a fork of their primary web app running in Teams, but other issues tend to crop up too, such as making accessibility work or just trying to figure out Azure Active Directory single sign-on. Now, building with adaptive cards, on the other hand, would allow you to build your app with ready-made UI building blocks that look and feel native on desktop, web, and mobile. For those of you that aren't familiar with adaptive cards, they're usually attached as these rich interactive UI snippets in a message body often sent either by a user or a bot, kind of like these examples here. Another benefit of using adaptive cards is that teams and the adaptive card team are investing heavily in their future. So take, for example, some of these new or coming soon UI features. This past year, we've launched support for form validation and the ability to use a people picker. Coming soon, we'll also be releasing an overflow menu, uh, which will make it easier for you to create drop-down actions in adaptive cards. There have been many improvements made over the last year, too many to cover in this call. Regardless, snapping to adaptive cards should give you peace of mind that you'll be rewarded over time with more and more UI features. When I say you can build adaptive cards with ready-made UI building blocks, this is what I mean. If you go to the adaptive cards website, you will find something called the designer. This is where you can drag and drop and edit your UI elements in real time. Um, you can also preview what they will look like in many different surface areas. So later on, I'm going to show you how I use it in my workflow when I get to the demo section. Now that we've got that out of the way, on to the good stuff. Let's talk about adaptive card-based tabs. Here you see a sample app built with adaptive card-based tabs. You'll notice that this is a Teams personal app with three tabs, Home, More, and Chat. Under the Home tab, you'll see three adaptive cards stacked one on top of another. So this is a great way to show your most used adaptive cards to your users and also provides a much nicer way to interact with your app rather than via the bot chat. On the right, you'll see what it looks like on mobile. And overall, you'll notice that it just looks a lot more native. This is because adaptive cards are styled to look right at home in Teams. So before we jump into the demo, I just want to spend a few minutes talking about some of the architectural decisions we made along the way and the developer experience. So this is how most Teams apps start. The developer builds a bot because that's the easiest way to get started. And with that bot, they're able to power a number of Teams capabilities, such as chat bots, messaging extensions, or even show dialogues called task modules. This is all powered by a bot backend and, uh, and an adaptive card front end. A few months later, along comes their manager and they, they ask them to build a tab because they've heard that tabs get better engagement and they like how they look. Okay, so let's. Look at what that looks like. Now the app's architecture is fractured. The developer had to spin up a separate web server to host their tab app, and they had to build the front end using you know, the usual set of web tools. Perhaps they wrote some glue code so that their backends can talk to one another. At the end of the day, not only <laughs> could you not reuse your previous investments, but you're now on the hook for maintaining two different stacks. So wouldn't it be easier if you could do something like this? I think that looks much better. So what if you could power everything in Teams with a single bot backend and an adaptive card front end? So this is the unified developer experience that adaptive card-based tabs aims to solve. Now you can reuse your previous investments and enable everything from a chat bot to a Teams tab. Let's talk quickly about just some of the developer paradigms that you can expect. So adaptive card-based tabs should be a welcome new capability for bot developers. 
When we were thinking about how we wanted to structure the developer experience, uh, we looked at task, task modules for inspiration, and we did this for two reasons. First, task modules, they're going to be used quite heavily from your tab. So this will just make the development experience more familiar. And then secondly, task modules rely on something called invoke events. An example invoke event is task fetch. So you can extrapolate task fetch to other events like tab fetch. The hope here is that this will make the back and forth or the request and response payloads much easier to understand. So let's take a look at some of those invoke events. So here are some common task module invoke events, task fetch and task submit. If you were to build adaptive card based tabs, you will be using events called tab fetch and tab submit instead. So let's take a look at the flow diagram. In the first section, the user clicks on the app and, the, and Teams sends a tab fetch event to the bot. The event basically says, hey bot, I'm the home tab and the user is John Smith. Can you please return the cards you want me to show to them? The bot backend then does some work and returns an array of adaptive cards. These cards are then rendered to the screen one after the other in the tab itself. If you've ever built task module dialogues, it should look very similar. So instead of returning one card to show in a dialogue, you'll just be returning multiple cards to show in a tab. So on to the demo. Let's see. Before I jump in to the actual code, just some housekeeping. How did I get here? So to start with, uh, I set up a bot uh, in Azure. And I just want to spend a few seconds talking about the configuration uh, panel over here. You'll notice I'm running this on Ngrok, just for local development. And I'll get back to this Microsoft app ID. I want to jump into the OAuth section real quick. I had to set up OAuth. Here you see the same Microsoft app ID. Here it's called the client ID. Think of this as your bot ID. They're one and the same. The next thing is I left tenant ID blank because I want this to work in any tenant. And then finally, I just defined some graph scopes that I want to get permission for. So set up a little bot in Azure. The next thing that I did is I went over to the build tabs with adaptive cards documentation. And if I scroll all the way to the very bottom, here you can see some code samples. Uh, for today, I'm just using the Node.js code sample. And that's going to be this one over here. And if you scroll all the way down the little readme file, you're going to have all the little setup instructions that I that I did before this call just to get everything set up. OK, so into the code itself. The first change you're going to notice is we now allow you to have a property called content bot ID under your static tabs property. We used to have a well, we used to we still have a property called content URL that renders a URL to the tab. But now we allow you to put a content bot ID. That's that Microsoft, you know, app ID or client ID that I was just showing you in Azure earlier. And basically what this says is when I go to this home tab, instead of rendering a URL, send a message to this this little bot over here. So I'm going to jump into that real quick. I have the, the app running. This is just what the sample looks like out of the box when you get it up and running. Not pretty, but it's really here for uh, illustration and for instruction purposes. So next thing I want to do is I'm going to go back into my project. Let me just stop my little server here. I'm going to go over to the file called adaptive cards. You'll notice it's under the server models folder. In here is well, a bunch of bunch of methods you can find, but I'm really going to be looking at the create fetch response. This basically returns a response to the bot. Over here, you'll see two cards. That is these two cards. So I want to return a third card. So let's go do that right now. Get demo card, I suppose. And we're not going to take any uh any properties on this one let's do this get demo card mt so in here let's just create a response object let's just leave it empty for now and let's return that okay so if you recall that's this one up here we want to return this little 
adaptive card over here. So what I did before this call is I went into the adaptive cards designer and I went and I created this little card over here. Um, down over here is the JSON for that card. I'm just gonna copy this and go back into VS Code. And I'm just gonna throw this in here, save it, uh, put this one back up. Give it a few seconds. There we go. Okay, back over here. And voila, there you go. This is my little adaptive card that I'm returning. So in this in this case, what 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 I went and did was I went and I said I wanted to add a uh, a new adaptive card on the top of this vertically stacked list. So just want to dig into it a little bit more into this demo. There's already some descriptive text over here to let you know how you can do some things inside of the demo. I want to just go through task modules. Task modules are a great way to complete, as the name says, little tasks. So for example, this little demo doesn't do anything, but one of the things that it, it allows me to do is after I'm com I've completed a task, I can redraw what's behind here. Now in this demo, um, it's pretty contrived. It's just going to return one adaptive card, one little card, just with a little bit of some information about what happened behind the scenes. But if I wanted to, you know, in this example, I have favorites. I could have a button that says add favorite, open up a little dialog, choose who my new favorite person is, click, click done, and then uh, have this little section be updated here with my fourth favorite contact. So moving on from that, I want to jump back in here. I wanna just talk about some of the nuances um, with respect to how you handle task module dialogues from your tab. So the good news is, is that there's no change to invoking a task module. But something to keep in mind is that when the task module completes or task submit, um, you will be returning a set of adaptive cards to re-render to the screen. So in order to do this, you will be nesting your tab object inside a task object. This is kind of done for syntactical reasons because the original request was a task fetch. The bot framework expects a response parent object to be of type task. Just something to keep in mind. Alternatively, you could just return 200 OK, close the dialog, and not redraw anything to the tab. Finally, there are some drawbacks or shortcomings, if you will, that I want to point out. Uh, you may have noticed that I only showed personal app tabs. That's because we don't yet support the adaptive card-based tabs in group settings, such as chats, channels, or meetings. Secondly, I hear this one a lot, we don't have rich layout controls. For now, you will just, we'll be sticking with a vertically stacked list of cards. This is fine on mobile, but it may make your desktop experience seem quite spacious. Finally, the developer experience can kind of feel a little reminiscent of the request response flow of web apps circa 2005. There's basically no way to asynchronously update the contents of a tab. Don't worry, we're thinking through all of these. Think of these perhaps less like drawbacks and more like a roadmap of what's to come. Thanks everyone for sticking with me until the end. Here is a short link to the documentation and where you can find the sample app I showed you during the demo. Just visit aka.ms slash adaptive card tabs. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Time permitting, let's see if there are any questions. We do have a couple of questions in the chat. Um, I'll try and grab some of the highlight ones in here at least. Okay. Um, what you were showing today, does this require any kind of admin or global rights permissions? This comes from Craig. Uh, no, not that I'm aware of. No. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, the, the usual ones like your your admin might need you to be able to, you know, sideload applications for development purposes. But if you spin up one of the M365 developer tenants and set that up for Teams development, you should be able to get going out of the box. Uh, there's no special uh, restrictions that I'm aware of. Gotcha. Thank you. Um, Stephen had asked uh, much earlier up on um, Teams. Sorry, Teams has, has Teams increased the size of the limit for adaptive cards. Previously, it was 28 kilobytes. Is that still the case? Do you know? That is a really good question. We are playing around with the numbers. I don't remember what it is, if it's 100 kilobytes or 200 kilobytes, but it is larger for adaptive card based tabs. So you, you can return a much greater response for these types of experiences. Gotcha. Um, 
Can you specify which version of adaptive cards this is running at? Um, I know that there's like one through 1 1.4, um, but if you have any information on that, it's coming from Mark. That is a good question. I I'm trying to think through what team supports. I think it's 1.3, maybe 1.3. 1 1.3 1 is the current, if I'm not mistaken. It, I do want to be careful and say it's the current one because there are some changes in 1.5 that I don't think that you support. Maybe a better way of saying it supports current, but just maybe not all of the features yet in the most current version. Um, what's, a, what's that feature called where you can uh, reload adaptive cards while they're into the Teams client? We don't support that yet inside of adaptive card-based tabs. Gotcha. Um, do you happen to know if there is support um, for a SharePoint web part that can display adaptive cards coming from uh, Mike Dixon? That is a good question. So this is SharePoint agnostic. Uh, I know this is a SharePoint uh, audience predominantly, but they said, I think I've seen the ability in uh, SPFX to show adaptive cards in a in a, a component. Is that correct or am I misremembering? Uh, yeah, it's it's a bit of complex. This is not, by the way, SharePoint audience. This is Microsoft 365 platform community call, uh, not a SharePoint audience for sure. But uh, now um, there are ways of showing adaptive cards in in the and using adaptive cards in the Viva connections, which is a bit of a kind of a well behind of the scenes. It's SharePoint still. So there's a there's ways of doing this, but it's not natively as such in a web part experience uh, in SharePoint Online. Fun okay, on. got it. Thanks, Pesa. Okay, I think one last question we might have time for on here is, um, is there support for tabs within the adaptive cards themselves coming from Jim Duncan? Sorry, could you could you repeat that? Is it possible to display tabs within the adaptive card itself? Yes, with some work. I have seen some wizardry from the adaptive cards team themselves. They have been able to create some really awesome components. I'm sure if you went snooping on GitHub or you found some of the GitHub uh, projects from some of the adaptive cards teams, you will most certainly find the ability for there to be tabs. I've seen it. Um, I just know that it's not something that's like natively supported out of the box. You have to do some adaptive card wizardry to make that work. However, I will say that I have seen demos or I'd rather say prototypes that some of our other partners have built as they were kicking the tires and they built uh, tab-like interfaces. So for example, we had one, um, actually one of our SPFX partners, build a prototype where they had a uh, a list up at the top of, there were buttons, but they kind of behaved more like tabs, where you could switch between different catalogs. They built like a little shopping app, so you could flip between shoes and uh, tennis rackets and go go to your shopping cart, and they, they, did, they were able to facilitate that kind of tab-like interface uh, with these adaptive card-based tabs. Excellent. And one last question, if we can sneak it in here. Um, is there any consideration for how adaptive cards will be interacting with loop components, uh, which was just recently announced at Ignite, um, either in terms of displaying adaptive cards uh, through loop or vice versa? <laughs> That's, uh, um, that is most certainly a great idea and something I will have to look into, um, but it is far too early for me to be able to say one way or the other, if that makes sense. However, I will say that the loop looks really cool and uh, we're excited to be bringing more of that uh, into the team's experience. Excellent. Well, really, really appreciate you coming on today, Loki, to, to share more about this, to demo this, um, sharing lots of resources and uh, other things for us to be able to dive into and get started with this. Of course. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Brian and Vesa. Thanks so much. Thank you, Loki. Really good stuff. Mm -hmm.